Welcome back! In the previous video we have implemented the attack animation, now it is time to start detecting if there are colliders nearby, so let me pause the game. And I'm going to open the weapon parent script since it handles all the logic for our weapon. And here I need to create two parameters. First one will be public, this will be transform, and this will be circle or raycast origin. And next we are going to have a public load, and this will be the radius. You can of course make those public properties or fields into serialized private fields instead. Basically what we want to do with those is we want to cast a circle cast, but before that we need to kind of set it up. So instead of going and uh, creating this logic first, we're going to create at the bottom the on draw gizmos selected method. Let's just click enter. And it will automatically create for us this method that allows us to create a gizmo for our object when the object is selected. I'm going to use gizmos.color equals color and let me set it to be blue. Okay, great. Since our transform is a reference, uh, we may want to uh, check if vector three position equals and if our uh, circle origin equals null, we are going to add question mark. We are going to set it to be vector uh, or maybe yeah, vector 3.04 uh, if it is null. Else colon, we are going to set it to be circle origin dot position if it is not null. And then all we need to do is call gizmos dot uh, draw wired sphere. And we are going to give this our position. And we are going to give this our radius that we have added at the top of our class. Now we can save our script and go back to Unity. Okay, great. And now if we select our uh, weapon parent, if we enable gizmos, and if we set the radius to be something bigger than zero, we can see a blue sphere appearing. Now we are going to set uh, as the weapon parent uh, child, let's create an empty object, let's call it circle origin or raycast origin. Make sure that you reset, reset the transform. Let's select the move tool in the scene and let's drag it somewhere in the center of our weapon. And actually we want to set this as the child of our weapon because if we rotate our weapon, now our circle origin will go with it. Okay, so make sure that this is a child of the weapon. And now if we assign to our parent the circle origin as the circle origin as the field uh, input, we have this Raycast visualization, so how we are going to perform the Raycast using the physics engine. Now let's reduce the radius to something like 0.55 or something like this. It will be uh, dependent on how you want to detect your collisions. Okay, so we know where it will be casted and basically what we are going to do is we are going to perform the animation and at some point we are going to cast the Raycast to detect the collisions. For now, Let's save our scene and let's go back to our weapon parent to code the logic for raycasting. Okay. Now here I will want to slide it down and I will want to create a new method. Let's call it public void detect colliders. And this method will be uh, using physics.2d.overlap uh, sphere. So we are going to type for each, tap tab twice, and we are going to type collider as the type in the for each loop that was created for us, the item will be collider. And we are going to loop in a collection taken from physics 2D dot overlap. Uh, we should have overlap circle all. And we are going to pass here the origin of our, so circle origin transform dot position and the radius. Uh, this is what we have created at the top here we're going to just pass the position and the radius. Okay, so now we are going to detect all the colliders, including the player collider inside of this loop. So for now, we are going to simply debug.log and we are going to type collider.name. Okay, now we need to call this method somewhere. So let's save this, let's go back to Unity. Great. And if we select our weapon, the best place to call it would be in the animation, in the attack animation, again, somewhere where we are here in the second keyframe. And again, we can't really, we, we can add the event, but in the inspector, we have only our trigger event method. 
So again, we could go to our weapon and duplicate this animation event helper. Now, if we do that, if we add another animation event helper, there is really no telling which method is which we want. Uh, besides, there was no additional method to get an uh, event added here. So instead, we need to kind of modify our e animation event helper or make it more specific to use only for our weapon. So let's open this script and we're going to simply add a new uh, Unity event called on attack performed. And we are going to add another method. So let's create public void trigger attack. And of course we can modify this to be more general. Basically we want to do the same call on attack performed question mark dot invoke to invoke this custom unity event. Let's save this. Let's go back to unity. Okay. Uh, in the select the weapon, let's select the animation uh, weapon attack and let's add to this event the call to our trigger attack. And for our weapon, let's select this on attack performed. Let's use this plus icon to add a field here and let's select the weapon parent and we are going to select the function weapon parent and we have the detect colliders method. Now we can test it. So let's create in our scene, right click, uh, 2D objects, sprites, let's create square and we have one square. Let's, we need to add to it the box collider 2D first so that it has a collider, let's set it to be trigger and let's select this control D to duplicate it. Let's slide it close so that we can try hitting both of those. Let's add another one. Uh, somewhere below or somewhere far, further apart from those two. Let's press play and then see if we can actually perform the hit. Okay, let me get close to do those. I'm going to press attack, pause the game, and you can see that we have attacked only square and square one. If I unpause and try attacking this or around the player, I can see that I have finally hit the player as well. So we need to deal with this in our custom script, health script that we are going to create soon. But basically we know now that our uh, hitting logic works and if we select our circle uh, our weapon parent you can see where the raycast is casted and you can modify it okay so let's stop it and let's focus on the third part of our logic so for creating the health script so that we can actually destroy those uh, and pre avoid hitting our player so first of all uh, to avoid hitting the same object that has casted the raycast the easiest way to do this is select the layers at the top right corner and we should add another layer so let's select edit layers just create another layer for example player and let's assign this to our player object and make sure that you assign it to the weapon parent because basically this is the object that is casting this and this way the player will not hit uh, itself because we are going to code the logic to check if the object that has performed the hit is on the same layer that the collider if it is then we are going to discard this hit okay let's go to our script let's right click create and we are going to create a health script and let's open it up okay let me paste the code here and i'm going to explain this so at the top we want to have serialized fields private int current health and the max health this will represent the health of the object or the enemy or whatever we want to hit now to add some feedback we may want to call public unity events with on hit or on death references depending on the value of the current health. So right click on this quick action and stay using unity engine.events. So now we can use those. This way you can assign some cool feedback like knockback effect or uh, some shader changes so to make the enemy or object flash white. If you want to learn more about this kind of cool feedback, check out my make a juicy to the shooter prototype course. The link will be in the description. So this is why I use those Unity events very often. And we are going to have a public bool is dead. Actually, this can be private. Okay. And what we are going to do, we are going to have a public void initialize health method. If we want to initialize it for our player or the enemy, we can do this here. We are setting the current health, the max health, and is that we are going to reset to be false. Now we are going to have a public void hit method. This will take int amount of damage that we are going to deal and the game object sender. This is because if we want to add some knockback effect, we want to have the reference to the game object that performed the hit. That's why we need to have the game object sender here. And of course, we need to check if we are already dead. We want to return. We do not want to do anything. 
Now to prevent hitting ourselves, we are going to check if sender.layer is the same as the game object.layer. So if we are player and if player has dealt the damage, we also want to return. We do not want to deal ourselves any damage. So we want to reduce the current health by the amount that we have passed here. If current health is greater than zero, we want to perform some logic. For example, we want to call some feedback else. We have on death with reference invoke sender and is that we are going to set true and of course we could simply do something like destroy and we can pass here the game object to destroy this object now this code will be available on github repository so you can uh, check it or download it okay let's go back to unity okay great so what we want to do is we want to select our squares let's delete two and leave one and we are going to assign to it the health uh, component now we can set this health to be for example two and max health to be two and this is it now we can duplicate this Control d we're going to move it as before close and we're going to move this one a bit further now we are going to assign to our player which has the co capsule collider so we are going to detect this object so the root the player we want to assign here the health component we're going to set this current uh, health and max health to be two let's set this squares current health and max health to be one just to test it and now we need to go back to our weapon parent script uh, where we have called our detect colliders method so let me go back to it okay and when i have this method which was detecting the colliders and debugging their names instead i want to create health a reference called health okay and i'm going to type if our health equals get comp uh, our collider get component and we are going to search for the component health this will return us null or not if it is not null this is what the if statement will check we are going to call health dot get hit and we are going to pass one as the value or whatever value you want to pass and we are going to pass the reference in this case we are going to pass the reference to the weapon parent or we can pass here transform dot parent and uh, we will need to get the game object so this way we are not going to pass the reference to our weapon parent but rather to the parent of the weapon, weapon parent so let me save this let me go back to unity okay so in my case weapon parent has as the parent the player so we are going to send the reference to the player again this would really depend on the setup that you have in unity okay so i think we are good to check our system if it all works so let me save this and let me press play okay let me swing a couple of times to just try to hit uh, the player let me pause the game let's check the player the health is still two let me unpause it and let's try hitting this square that has health one and it is gone let's hit those two let's pause the game and let's check this square has current health one and the max health was two and the second one as well so now we should be able to kill this one and this one and now our system works great so we have our health component which will interact with our detection system that is inside the weapon parent this way we can make our combat system work and we are going to only hit those objects once because we are using the uh, event from our animation for the uh, in the weapon attack to perform only one ray cast per attack great i hope that you have found this tutorial useful uh, if you did leave a like leave a comment subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next tutorial take care